All right, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is one of my favorite things ever to watch. We got Carl Pilkington in An Idiot Abroad. I'm so excited. Uh, season 2, Episode 5, Meet a Gorilla. Now, the question is, will he meet a gorilla? <laughs> I have my doubts. But anyway, let's just go because this is awesome. I still feel bad for him about last time about the whale watching. He didn't properly get to see one. That sucked. I felt bad for him too because I get seasick and stuff. But um, I don't know how much they could sidestep having him meet a gorilla. But, you know, it's Ricky and Steven and there's always, there's always something else to do. <laughs> So we'll find out. But anyway, yay, I'm excited. And season two has been proving to be so much freaking better than season one. And I thought when I, when I started watching season one, I was just like so excited because it was the best thing I've ever seen. And then, and then it just got better. So I'm excited. Let's go. Look at this one. Come face to face with mountain gorillas in their natural habitat. What a privilege that is. One of the most endangered species on the planet. One of our closest living oh, relatives. <laughs> I just want to say, just because he reminded me, wait. ...species on the planet. When I was uh, looking for this episode to, to, to set it up, set everything up, you know, the lights and stuff, and um, for some reason, the channel that uploaded him, Mr. Dilkington, I think is the channel, or something to that effect, uh, for some reason, when they uploaded it, they didn't do it in order. So kind of I just have to like skim through the titles to see to find the one in order because it, it, it's happened to me before that I started watching them in the order that were uploaded and I almost just kind of, you know, completely wrecked it. And um, I was looking through the thumbnails and I swear there is not one where Carl has his mouth closed. <laughs> He's like this all the time, and I don't know if they like it was deliberate that they chose that or what. The only time he had his mouth closed was one where he's like playing a recorder or a flute or whatever. But every other thumbnail is just him, just like this, just like I don't know if it's he's incapable or or and and mostly here he looks like he's attentive to whatever he's reading the the bucket list or whatever. But like in in most of them he's just kind of like looking off, just like. <laughs> and it's just, I just, I was cracking up alone, just trying to find this. But anyway, I just thought I'd share it because it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> One of our closest living relatives, 98% genetically identical to a human, a gorilla. Even more similar to you. What an amazing privilege that is. <laughs> I'd like to see one. I've seen them, seen them in the zoo. Right. And they do impress me. Why do they impress you? How do they impress you? They're just, um, just, just very human in the eyes. I, I think that would be such a meeting of minds. Like you'd dogs, come face so to face said. with a mountain gorilla and its natural habitat. Both just there. Both nude amongst the foliage. Why? I wouldn't be nude again. Yeah. What is it with you and nude? They right? don't like clothes. And you are hairy all over. And I think you've got more chance of them seeing similarities. Not wandering about in, a, in a, like the woods looking for apes, nude. Because <laughs> there's a point when that woods ends and then suddenly one creeps out and you've got me legging it. Nude. <laughs> Nude. Hello, Carl. Thanks, Steve here. He does have an, ob an obsession with trying to get Carl nude to an extent that's quite interesting when they, you know, call each other friends and stuff. I mean, I'm not judging, but it's def there's something definitely there. Now, I know the gorillas you're going to see are in Uganda, okay. but before you, you head over there, we wanted you to just explore a bit more of Africa. So we're going to start you off in South Africa, because there's a, a couple of projects there we want you to, to take part in. There's a chap called Sipo, okay, he runs one of the local charities. Um, we've arranged for you to, to teach some local kids, build some huts. You've got a chance here to give something back, literally get your hands dirty. Alright, mate. Just for uh, charity. As, I mean, has it got worse? Is it me, as I've got older? Does it seem like there's more and more stuff we've got to give to? When I, I don't think I've ever seen him drive before. He's always being driven by, like, the most colourful character they could find. It's weird to see him actually drive. I didn't know he could drive. <laughs> as a kid, does it... Charity. As, I mean, has it got worse? Is it me, as I've got older? Does it seem like there's more and more stuff we've got to give to? When I was a kid, all I ever saw 
was like that kid wearing calipers outside a, a supermarket. It was like a, an iron model of a girl with calipers on her legs and oh, a built-up shoe. And you, you put like twenty p in it or whatever. That's what, that was. That was being hassled for charity. Now you can't walk down the street without someone going. I need your help. Fair enough. I think these people are sick and tired of people coming in from England with a camera crew. That's probably why they've not moved on. They probably want to build new houses and all that. They can't. They haven't got time. Crews keep turning up. If it's not Geldof, it's that Richard Curtis bloke or Lenny Henry cropping up. They can't get anything done. <laughs> Supo. Hey, Carl. Okay. How's it? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah, not too bad, not too yes. bad. Mmm, Carl, welcome to Deep Snow. <laughs> Let's go for it. The guy let go first. Mmm, <laughs> Carl, welcome to Deep Snow. Okay. Let's go for it. So we can run. All right, who's the man in the back? It's your security. I need security. Yeah. I'm Carl. Yeah. How are you doing? Just a normal handshake. How many kids will I be teaching? How many can you handle? Twelve. Twelve? Is that, are you happy with that? That's a lot. Not really. <laughs> you see, that's the problem with charity, isn't it? It's never enough. I mean, you've just dropped me in here. Everything's a bit of a shock to the system. But I've got a bodyguard. He's still with me. I'm in a primary school. How dangerous is this place? <laughs> By sending me in to teach the local kids here, I, I think it's more of a hindrance. I know nothing. I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. <laughs> Why don't you talk about some of the places you've been? Yeah, but if I start going, yes, well, well, kids, um, China. They haven't got doors on the shitters. They'll go, well, we haven't. <laughs> You've seen where they live in. There you go, OK. What can I teach them? The children have chosen the topic, by the way. What is it? You're going to talk about risk. Risk? Mm hmm Risk in general. You can just say to them whatever you think and whatever you know about risk. Afternoon, everyone. OK. Like, he's not much of a risk taker, though. The thing where he had to do the land dive, that was like the one of the lamest things I've ever seen. Also one of the funniest, but one of the lamest things. Like the less, the least risky thing I've ever seen anybody do in my life. And then the, he didn't want to like bungee jump. There's like so many things. He's not a risk taker. The, the um, thing that rotated. I don't remember if it was zero G. No, it was whatever. The space shuttle thing simulator majiggy. Well, that's what we're going with. Oh, because he didn't want to do the zero G. Like, see, he's not a. I can't. I'm. I'm still quite shocked he got in the tank with sharks. That was. I still can't believe he did that. But like, if I have to anticipate what the hell he's gonna say, it's kids don't take risks. They're not worth it. <laughs> Afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Did they give him Okay, the risk. Right, stop messing about the back. Right, will we shut the door, please? Because that's also very risky, leaving the door open. Mm. Thank you very much. Why? Um, what do you think risk is? Hmm. <coughs> right. See, it's tough, this. Does anyone have any risks in the life here today? Okay. Yep, yeah, of course you can. Oh. Um, teenagers fall pregnant. Is that a risk? How, how old is she to be worrying about that? <laughs> 13. 13? I didn't worry about people having kids when I was 13. Do they honestly want to know about risk? Yes. In sex. Yes. In sex. You understand that? That's what we're talking about here? Yes. Honestly, I thought I was coming in to talk about Umpty Dumpty. Right, OK, here you go. <clears throat> The thing is, I haven't got kids, just so you know. I'm 30, 38 now. I haven't got any children. So why do you not have a kid? Because of you are old. I'm old? <laughs> yes. Yes. It means you don't have a wife. No, I have. I've got a girlfriend for 17 years. Oh, 17 so years. No! She's not 17. <laughs> I've been with her for 17 years. <laughs> All right? All okay. right, yeah. Don't rush into having kids. <laughs> Did we clear that up? <laughs>
<laughs> and that's the advice. Don't rush into having kids. That's it. No, nothing about... The, okay. What you should do, focus on getting a job. Meet a woman, meet a man. Have a good time for a bit, but be careful. Wear a condom. Yeah? Yes. Right, I've covered that. What else do you want to know? That's it? You cut your hair, you? <laughs> no, it's not cut. This isn't a style. I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our... I love the little boy up front. He's just so bold <laughs> in his questions and stuff. So cute. What know. You cut your hair, you? Mm -hmm. I love no, it. No, it's not cut. This isn't a style. I'm bold. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our... I don't say, can you just take that bit off and leave that? <laughs> Do you want to play on a bike? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Beep, beep. That was easier. <laughs> this is a risk. That's <laughs> risky. Never do that. Never do it one-handed. Never do that. Never do that. There you go. I learned from Ricky Javier that you are good in DIY. I'm so right. I'm looking for the guy for DIY. I'm your man. So you can do it. Geldof. He did a lot, didn't he? He, was, he got involved in all this in the 80s, and he's got sick of it. He's moved on. I don't hear about him coming here anymore because you feel like, oh, what can you do? What can you do? How can you sort this out? You're going to break down a house and rebuild it from scratch. Is this just water, Why? or is that...? Uh... Everything that you're not thinking of. We we'll need to meet the family first. Carl. I am super sure they have their reasons, but that seems silly when it's just planted. The idea is just stated the way it was. All right, you're gonna tear down a house, but then you're gonna build it back. It wouldn't it be better if I just build one from scratch next to the house, so there are two houses. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm. I hope there will be an explanation, but that just sounded weird. How you doing? Hello? Do that and that. Little fella. Hello? Hello? This is where it starts. Give loads to charity. Helping old people. Deaf kids. Save the kids. If anything... Okay. I'd say I'm single-handedly causing the world's population problem. Because I'm saving everyone. I'm like Superman. <laughs> Sure, we got the right house. Wait, because, wow. I have to hear that again because, just wow. Is he, is, is he serious? I thought he was bullshit, man, though. Give loads to charity. Helping old people, mm -hmm. deaf kids, uh -huh. save the kids. If anything, I'd say I'm single-handedly causing the world's population problem. Because I'm saving everyone. I'm like Superman. Wow. Sure, we got the right house. <laughs> Quite happy helping out. I help anyone out. Someone needs a bit of help. But me turning up for one day, doing a bit of DIY, is that really going to sort this out? It's going to take forever. Look how many need to be replaced. 600,000 people live here, he said. Apparently, the rules are... You're meant to build your own, but the people we're helping today are ill, so they need help to build their house. Okay. I don't know where they went. I sort of shook their hand and said, I'm going to build your house. It disappeared. Got out for the day. He's been, he's been lying on a bed in the corner there, just... Has he? They're, like, not on holiday, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine being ill and there's someone coming out and knocking your house down? Well, hang on a minute. Just leave me, let me be. I want peace and quiet. He's got the builders in making the right racket. Right balls up on that one. The word better is being used very loosely. But it's still better. Not the greatest view, is yeah. it? It's all right, I've done it. Get, like, Steve. I understand that that's what they have and that's, that's what there is, but wouldn't that get insanely hot? It's Carl. Do you do that sort of charity work? Yeah, I got it done. I got the hut done. But there's about another 600,000 to do, so <laughs> I, I don't quite understand what I was meant to get out of it. 
All you're doing is you're just helping others because that's a good and honourable thing to do. Yeah, but I do that. When I get back, I'm going to show you my bank statement and you'll see all this stuff flying out left, right and centre, helping all these other charities. But, Carl, don't you understand the difference between a little bit of money dribbling out of your account once a month and actually getting down there with your hands dirty? Right. When, 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 was, when was the last time you were over here, Steve, getting your hands dirty? When were you... When, I, I can't remember you saying. When, when were you here again? I'm asking you because you know. You're on the ground floor. What I've done, I've built a nice new back. shiny snap back or clap back or whatever the word is. But finally, there you go. You you go, Carl. Poor. Because you know, you're on the ground floor. What I've done, I've built a nice new shiny hut where the old hut was. There's still a river of shit was in past it. You know what, mate? You are right. You changed my mind, Carl. All these years I've been thinking it was good to help other people. But you know what? Talking to you for two minutes on this phone, I realised, no, Carl is absolutely bloody right. I've cancelled all of my standing orders. Forget it. No, I'm not saying that. What have I been saying? I'm just telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. What more can I do? I don't know. Okay, I don't wait, because I get his point, because he's just, like... that. Those kind of solution things are just, like, putting a Band-Aid on someone that's just got messed up. Band-Aid ain't going to help. you got to solve the problem. So, he obviously, in, in perfect Carl fashion, didn't express it properly, but he has the point that it's better to solve the bigger issues and, and find a way to help in, in you know the root issues then just you know build up a, ha a little hut as he calls it again or put a band-aid here or there when the problem is much bigger and deeper and just worse so i get what he means and now i want to see steven doing some charity work doing a building a house <laughs> what I'm talking about. it's just a bit of frustration and I just feel that just because I build one hut, it's not enough. Here's something. Do you know I had an argument with him once over 50 pence? If we're talking about Steve and money, 50 pence. I got some coffees, walked over, he said, where's my change? I said, oh, it's in my pocket. Oh, that's mine. And we had a big, honestly, not messing about, a big full-on blown argument over 50 pence. That's the reality, but he won't let that in. He'll go cut that out. 50 pence! <laughs> All right. I got a text from Steve this morning just saying that he wants me to meet up with Seco again, that charity bloke, to uh, take part in some local activity. I don't know what it is. That's, that's all he said. Welcome to Soweto Schooling Towers. Okay. Very iconic. And you look at the middle, the bungee oh, I jumping. Can see why. Oh. It's a bungee. Wow. What, what's, what's the, what's the thinking? We've done this. We've no, done you it. did not. We went all the way to New Zealand, didn't do it. There you go, it didn't do oh, it. Oh Jesus, that's. Uh, what up? I'm not doing it. What? Let's up? go and have a look, mate. There's a really lovely view of Soweto up there. And... I know you're game. Just go up there and have a look, see the township. Oh, there you are. Push right off the edge. No, nobody will push you. Oh. I'm going to do this. It's crazy. Obviously, all I can think of when I see those coolie towers, I like that they have murals on them, but all I can think of is just The Simpsons. That's it. That's just where my mind goes. How's it going? Um, I'm, I'm a bit pissed off because I'm on the edge of a bungee again. Again? Yeah. I think you'll <laughs> feel really good about yourself if you have one more chance and you do it this time. Is he going to jump? Oh, oh God, God almighty. Jesus. It's pointless. It's pointless. I don't want to do it. If people want to do it, then great, but there's no reason for me to do this. There's no big payoff. I don't think I've ever been... Ever, I've seen a bunch of videos of people, like, bungee jumping, scared, not scared, this or that, but I don't think I've ever seen somebody dive headfirst as if it were water. That was crazy. If you have one more chance, and you do it this time. Is he going to jump? Oh, That's God crazy. almighty. Yeah. It's pointless. It's pointless. I don't want to do it. If people want to do it, then great, but there's no reason for me to do this. There's no big payoff. Oh, what if I gave you a reason? 
Okay, if you jump, I'll buy a hut for someone. How much are they? The 500 quid. Do you know what? I'd rather I'd rather pay the 500 quid out of my own money <laughs> than to do this jump. I'll raise you. I'll buy two hunts if you jump then. Where's this going to end then? He's got more money than me. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'll pay the grand. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was so cute, and I I don't know who he's asking. I don't know if he's asking. Uh, the guy that was with him, the cameraman, but that's just too cute. I guess not the cameraman, but that was really cute. I'll buy two huts if you jump then. Where's this going to end then? He's got more money than me. I love that. <sighs> I, I tell you what, I'll pay the grand. Let's leave it Three. there. Three huts. For fuck's sake. Three huts. You're making me look all right, twat, eh? No, I'm not. You <laughs> are, because I don't want to do it. I'll pay that, I'll pay that. This is my last offer, OK? I'll buy five huts. <laughs> if you jump, you've bought five huts, basically, and you feel good about yourself, and you've made me look a twat. Think about it. Think about it. I like that deal. So you're going to do it, right? Oh. Look at you. Hmm? You're going to do it, aren't you? You're going to do it. All the work yesterday, has that gone out the window? I built a hut yesterday. You should be over the moon about that. It's good, man. It's not so good. As you can see my face, I'm happy, man. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, uh. No, the weight. Oh my god. Oh. What's gonna happen? To get it. To you get don't it. Have to do it like that. What do you mean you don't have to do it like that? You As don't. if I would be. It's a definite no, honestly. It's not for me. Let's leave it as that. If I tell Ricky I didn't do it, are they going to keep doing this? Are they going to set something up again whilst I'm here? You're going to find out. I'm just thinking... Props to him, though. Props to him to not for not getting pressured into doing something he genuinely... Gen, I don't like that word. Genuinely doesn't want to do, though. Good for him, because that, that's not fair, dude. Like, if you're scared to death of doing something, or you just, something doesn't feel right, you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't be pressured into it just for TV. That's dumb. But props to him for sticking his guns. Give him a call. I Say, so, yeah, I did it. Sticking to his guns. All right. All right, how's it going? How was it? Mental. Did you do it? You yeah. jumped? Yeah. Well, I had to, didn't I? So, uh, yeah. Well done. Were you, were you scared, though? No, no, not really. I just, you know, <laughs> it was one of the things, it just was focused. I just thought, I've got to do it, let's get on with it. I just was like, right, is the tape well rolling, done. I'm doing this. Bang, done, bosh. Get these Brilliant. five huts, let's get these people happy here. They were over the moon. Oh, well done. Tell Steve, yeah? Just let him know, cos he was having a go at me yesterday and all that, I'm sick of it. So just say, Carl yeah. did it, he's raised the money, We've got the five huts, everyone's happy. I would, I would ask Steve to chip in, but do you think there's any point? Well, it's pointless. I said that. OK. If you do it, um, I've arranged a caravan for a little treat, cos I know how much you like them. Um, so, not only have they got their huts, and you feel brilliant, but um, you can uh, stay in a caravan now. That's all right. I'm happy with that. Well, yeah, it was a treat. <laughs> no, I know it's not right to do that, but he's shut him up now, hasn't it? That's the end of it. I've done a bungee, as far as he's concerned. For now. Ricky's happy. Kids have got the huts. I'm happy. I've got my caravan. So he's a, he's a nice lie, isn't it? It's not an evil one. There you go. Well, now I can go where I want to go, can't I? Stay where I want to stay. So I'm thinking of stopping off yeah. at a place where... Uh, a couple have got a hippo as a pet. Penny, coffee, make you Shirley. That's crazy. That is crazy, dude. I have heard several times, and I've also done a little bit of research because I was interested. But hippos are like mad, vicious. Like they can just tear you apart like nothing if they want to. They're like way deadlier than. The animals that are considered like the most deadliest things, like sharks of the ocean or lions or this and that, like hippos are worse. Hippos are just like, if a hippo wants you dead, 
you did. <laughs> like that. Like nothing. So, okay. I didn't know anybody would ever consider having one as a pet. But they are cute though. Especially when they're babies. So, peace. Yeah. Oh, as a pet. Oh, Penny, God, nice to meet you. Penny, Shirley, Shirley. Yes. to meet you. Welcome here. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? I saw it on the internet. There's loads of clips. Just wandering about the front room. It's mental. Quite fancy getting a pet. But it's just that thing of airs going everywhere. I suppose that's the good thing with a hippo. You don't get airs on the sofa. There you go. I guess you don't. It's bloody massive, isn't she? When she comes out of the water. Oh, my oh. God, it's letting its own... Myself. That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. Stop talking Fucking about your it. family and pets because it just makes it depresses me. Every time this guy talks about his family and pets, it's just like, oh my god, what a disaster. Didn't let the cat in the lounge. Mm. Fucking hippo in here. He can't get through there, can it? No. 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 Would you like to feed her beans? Oh, you don't have to throw it in. She's calm, she's relaxed. There you go. Don't trust her. Wonderful. That was excellent. Oh, what a lovely little baby. It's not little. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Donkey Jess. Donkey Jess. One more. Oh, oh. Keep messing. I'm making a right mess of your kitchen. I think you got a hippo in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much it would cost to feed a hippo. Like monthly cost. Because I imagine it'd be a lot. And they like they eat a lot. I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm thinking. You can't use that. That's Do you have insurance? So if you knock your plasma over, are you covered? No. It's like some, some sort of mad dream or a cartoon. Back. When you think about what I've been put through, and this is the maddest thing I've seen in 38 years. Every night, she has a aromatherapy body massage. What it makes me realise is, is that I'm quite lucky with Suzanne. She asked for a cat. She's asked for a dog. I've gone, no, we haven't got the space. Shirley's got a hippo. That hippo's living a great life, though. Look at that. She's loving it, too. Well, yeah, it's half eight on a Sunday morning. Jesus Christ. You can't be lying in bed all the time, right? There's charity stuff that needs sorting out. Sipo has been calling me, the guy, you know, who does the charity stuff, raising money for the huts. Have you paid it yet? Hello? Oh, what do you want? Well, I'm just calling up, just letting you know I'm having a good time. Just, uh, just had a little shower, had some breakfast, sat here with a hippo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, honestly. I'd say if you're seeing animals, this is the best way to see it. In someone's house, have a cup of tea if you want it. Biscuits on, on the go. Just sat here now. It's well happy. Is it happy, though? What do you mean? Of course it's happy. It doesn't just live in a house, though, does it? No, it wanders off, wanders in, watches a bit of telly. <laughs> wild animals should be in the wild, Carl. Whatever. I mean, don't be worrying. I'm off to see... I do not think that hippo's having a bad time. Just, I think she likes the attention. <laughs> she gets. The gorillas, I'm not going to bring one home. Sipo again. Hiya, Carl. The money still hasn't transferred into our account. Give it a chance. Ricky tells me you're up near Jessica the Hippo and there's a township that could do with your help there. Don't be reading they and driving. They also need more huts. Scoozy? Let me know. Ricky's just taking the piss. He can't even be asked to wind me up anymore. He's getting someone else to do it. Is that what it's going to be like for the rest of the trip? We're in the shit here. Who can we call? I've got Carl's number. Have you? To him. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like the fourth emergency service. Hello? All right, it's Carl. How's it going, mate? Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad. I'm a lot happier now with this uh, caravan. 
but the glory days when you used to holiday in Wales? Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty close. This is the happiest I've been on the, doing this bucket list. Cool. I'll tell you this, mate, honestly, I have not heard you this chipper, this chirpy, possibly forever. So, uh, you got out for me to do. We thought maybe it'd be nice for you to go and visit the Ender Belly Tribe. Ender Belly Tribe? They're going to teach you their painting techniques, all right? And in exchange, you get the privilege of cooking a meal for the king. Oh, right. The king? All right, you're actually going to be cooking for royalty. I've never met a king before. What do I cook him? I don't know, mate. Whatever you think would express Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> OK. It's the first dinner party I've ever done this. Things. So just keep it simple, cheese. I'm going to cook him something that I'd eat at home. I don't want to try and be fancy. Oh, Obviously please. not. With the things out. he grabbed, like slices of cheese and beans in a can. <laughs> I think fancy's out the window. Paul's going, bloody hell. Cooking for a king tonight. He'd eat beans. Well, yeah, another tribe. Ah, uh, fine. They're not that different. I mean, you know, the clobber that they wear and all that, sometimes you kind of go, what are you playing at? But, take that away. They're just people, aren't they? And most people like beans. Okay. I like all this, this is good. Very nice. Very nice, that. Colourful. We can paint your carab. Oh, that's so cute, but it's not really um, I'm not allowed to paint the caravan, though, am I? Yeah, no, it's a hide. Actually. It's not my caravan. It comes yeah. off with water. Really? Oh. Can you wash it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, if it comes off, just cos, like I say, it's not mine. But, you know, that'd be good, then. Okay. All right, Thank yeah, let's you. do that. I like that. Do you need help getting up when you've got these on? Cos you can, I imagine it's difficult getting up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having guttering on your legs. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're all right? <laughs> Right, OK. Just one side, maybe. Yeah. Just a little bit at a time. Let's, you know, let's not go mad. So what... I don't understand this paint. No, that's not a paint. Countdown. A countdown? Yeah. Cow dung? Yeah. What are you using? Cow shit? Yes. No, I'm not seeing cow shit. That's lovely paint. You've come over here with a bucket of shit to put my caravan here. That looks nothing like the art over there. Oh. It's nothing like it. This yes. is like a dirty protest. Yeah. Police. Your mum's been at it again. Shit all over number 18. <laughs> so you must also do that. You must dip in your hand there. It stinks when you wake it up like that. <laughs> Keeps hitting me. <laughs> oh, hey. <sighs> Is that OK? Yes, it's nice. Oh, it's nice. Oh, All the toilets I've been in since I've been here have looked like this, so I realise now it's art. <laughs> Got so here we are. It's flicked off. I must be cooking for a king. Got my hands in a load of shit here. Good point. Brilliant. Luke, can I go and wash my hands? They could have had anything, man. They could have made a color out of anything. They could have made it out of tea. They could have made it out of berries. They could have made it out of leaves. They could have... You, you coffee. You can make... Let's say paint out of a lot of things. That was just me. <laughs> that was just messed up. That's the king. Hello. I'm Carl. Yes. Yeah? Good one. Good one. I'm just preparing your food for you. Yes. How many people um, are you eating with tonight? These people. All these are eating as well? Yes. yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, you go and do what you got to do. He's wearing a full cheetah on his back. Should give him fucking kitty cat, not beans. What's this on the floor? Nibbles, to start. 
shortbread biscuits. I don't know if they've tried them. It's a new thing for them. Ooh, oh. Wiggly worms, some crisps. Ooh, oh. In case they're sort of fitness freaks, apples. Let's go get some. Crisp biscuit, fruit, wiggly worm, quite sour. Oh fucking hell! Toast. Toast. Beans. I'm stressed Toast. out. Well, can't you just help us here? You can see I'm struggling here. I can't do this. I can't do it, Luke. Fucking hell. I've just kicked a load of shit on that. <coughs> Sorry about the delay. Meat. Meat? Yeah. I the just... man is always he we eat. He eat with the meat. Uh, this isn't it. There is also a pudding. Oh, they want to know what it's called. It's not a meat pudding, though. Cheese on toast with beans. <laughs> Geldof said he fed the world. That's a fucking nightmare, Dude, it is. I thought, I thought he was doing good, though, because I thought when they were, like, meat, I thought they were going to be, you know, vegetarian or something like that, or some kind of vegan situation, but um, that kind of backfired, didn't it? I, too, though... Nah, I need, I can eat all, you know, vegetables, this, that, but I need some kind of protein. Something. <laughs> this is going to sound horrible. Something has to be dead, though. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Uh, pudding. Pudding, yeah. Chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. What? Quite warm. God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. <laughs> they don't want any more. He's moved on to a plate of meat. Some woman's come out. She's had more time though, hasn't she? Hers looks fucking brilliant compared to that shit. <sighs> well, that was an experience. Right, Look, I've sorted out for you to join a major animal conservation project. Nice. They're going to be relocating wild rhinos. Uh, the range is called Lee, and they'll train you up, give you a real wild round experience. That sounds right. nice. See you later. I don't get it at times. How many animals do I need to see? And I've still got to face the gorilla. What's that there? What's, what animal is this? That's the dung of a blue wildebeest. It's uh, Well, you, could, you don't have to pick it up. I just... Pretty old dropping. Yeah, quite old. Are you joking? Are they olives? What are you doing licking it? Just taste testing it. It's a way to determine the age of the dropping. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm determining the freshness of the dropping. And it can be determined just by, by the taste of it. <clears throat> But is that a last resort? That's, I mean, sure, that's you keep driving through. just a standard little tester. You don't want to follow the wrong set of footprints, do you? So, how often a week are you licking shit? Yeah. With me. Taste it. Won't hurt you. Get your finger in there a bit, and then you can kind of get a bit of a, a taste of it, you know? Things to do before you die. No! Stick a finger in <laughs> Not even shit. a little bit. Got some? You taste it, it's a little bit sweet, and then we'll find some later on that's even fresher and oh, it won't be so like sweet. Like wine tasting? Kind of, I suppose, the same kind of principle. <laughs> oh, God! No! No. Get it. Have you had better, Carl? Do you know you bet with Matthew <laughs> Kelly? Do you get that over here? No. It's a programme on the telly. Say if there was piles of shit mm. and I blindfolded you and went, what's that? Would you, could you tell just by that what animal it is? <laughs> I'd give it a go. It's not a skill to be proud of. <laughs> So now we're going to head into the area where the rhinoceros has been located. Why have we got a shift there? Well, this particular rhinoceros bull is holding a territory which is full of young females that are actually, many of them are his daughters. Ah. They're the weirdest looking thing on the planet, aren't they? 
I mean, there's some people who think God created oh, stuff like that. Well, look at it. Would he really? Would he really design something as gormless looking as that? And don't look at me. We've given the rhino the injection, stressing its head in a tree, messing about with it a bit. And then they'll walk it over to a truck. Get it on the back of a truck. Oh, fuck! Get out of this tribe. Because apparently I've sort of had it away with its own daughter, which isn't good. You kind of get div rhinos running around. Take it to another <laughs> sort of group of rhinos. It can have it away with them. That's it, innit, really? I don't want to get this close to a gorilla unless this fella's uh, sticking an injection up its arse. Oh. I mean, we could do that, couldn't we? that close to a gorilla unless you had the other guy tasting <laughs> the droppings. Gosh. I was confused to why, but now that what he said actually makes sense. I kind of feel bad for the rhino though. I know that uh, I know he was causing issues or whatever, but can you imagine how stressful that would be for the rhino? Just like have 20 guys just, you know, get you stuck in a tree just pinch your butt with anesthetic and just relocate you you know just wake up somewhere completely new you lost your family you, you lost your your friends you lost your your favorite pub or whatever <laughs> you're just like somewhere completely new that must suck dude stressful as hell knock it out have me sat with it can you like it <laughs> biggest thing second biggest thing on the planet yeah there's a fact for you if you want it's a lot good. What's the biggest then? Uh, okay, I'm quite... Elephant, isn't it? No. Second, that's a... It is. Don't, no. Why do you question everything? Whale! I, like, I know some facts. No, you don't. I think you've been whale watching on this series. <laughs> I got a text from Suzanne. I just was saying, oh, how's it going? She's still oh, stressful. I'm moving office. I was moving a fucking rhino. <laughs> I, I I understand that Suzanne is never part of anything. I understand that they respect her privacy and she doesn't appear anywhere. They don't show photos of her. They don't show this. But it would be so good, at least like on these, to actually hear conversations of him with her. I mean, how or have her... Like, can you imagine if Suzanne was here just joining him? That would be so freaking fun to see. I get it. She doesn't like it. I understand that. But just it would be awesome, dude. I, I, I so want to see how like how it is. Because you always get his side of the stories and how, you know, he, he, he's telling you what they talked about, whatever. But I would love to see it in action, dude. I would love to see a, just a simple, simple conversation with Suzanne. That's all I ask. I think it would be really fun. <laughs> Hi Carl, um, now you're in Uganda, there is a market where they sell a lot of second-hand clothes that have been donated by charities. So uh, meet your guy, this guy called Bam, and he'll be by a white van at the entrance. Look at it! <laughs> Look at it! thought it might be quite a nice gesture if you buy up some clothes that you could take with you on the trek to see the gorillas. Alright mate, bye. Do you know a fellow called Bam? Bam. A, f a man called Bam in a, what, in a van. You Bam? Hi, Carl. Hi. So you're welcome to Uganda. Um, yes. All right. Hey, deep in the forest, you need something like a jacket, a heavy jacket. Heavy jacket. Okay, and uh, khaki or cordros. That's, all, that's what we're going to get. I mean, is that a priority when I'm going to see a gorilla? What pants am I going to wear? I'm going to need a pair of cords. Then Ricky won't stay naked. There's that no way. So I've got, ape of him. That was so simian of him. The way he just scratched his little head. Look at that. Pair of cords. Then Ricky won't stay naked. There's no way I'm going naked. Gorillas in the mist. She had clothes on. David Attenborough, when he was rolling about with him, having a wrestle. Yeah, he's not out. So I, I'm not doing that. So if that's if it's if it's wear the cords or not, I'll wear the cords. I don't even know why you're filming me shopping. Honestly, I sometimes think you're making a different programme to me. Let's buy these. 7,000. 7,000. 
Uh, how much is that in pounds? One pound sixty, mate. One pound sixty for a pair of pants. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. What else have they got? Yeah, they do need a long sleeve. That's brilliant. Oh. Great top here. Yeah. Now I've, I've always got a problem with the boiler. <laughs> good, that, isn't it? Oh. Just ten more oh. minutes, just to have a look around. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they're good then. You like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. How about if I just do a swap? Let's go. Got to go, mate. Hey, look, they've got a pool table. Oh, this isn't really what we, we had in mind. To be honest, I didn't have in mind shopping about buying cords. Rules have changed. <laughs> Join in. Madonna, yeah. <laughs> I thought he didn't like dancing. <laughs> what? Visitors, you are welcome. You are welcome to our country, Uganda. Hey. All right, boys. Maybe we didn't spend too long in the market. Um, probably should have told you you got a 12-hour drive to get to the uh, impenetrable forest. Uh, but I mean, it's easier than just sitting in the van, chilling out. Hard to work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you I wish you all the best luck to stay on this Gorilla Forest camp. It's amazing to me how they plan his misfortune so much. Like the one thing he enjoyed and actually just shopping around and, and messing around. They withheld the information that the drive was so long just to screw him over. <laughs> it's like amazing to me how much, how like well planned out and thought out it is to make him as miserable as possible. It just baffles me. It's, it's, it's very interesting. It pissed me off at times. I can imagine. Have you thought about what you're going to say? To who? To the viewers. He's when you're wearing out there the gas shirt! <laughs> Have you thought about what you're going to say? To who? To the viewers when you're out there with the gorillas. I don't know. Just see how it goes. Why are you worrying about that? No one's going to be expecting a great speech from me anyway, are they? Yeah. Everything's been said that can be said about a gorilla. There you go. Then why are we doing it? You tell me. To see one. How long's this trek? Three hours. You are kidding me. We walk in another three hours. Not oh, me. At least it's daytime. I'm just hoping it's, you know, it's worth it. I think you already ruined his new shirt. Go around this closer here. I've just smelled the way it is. You can smell a gorilla's nest. Yes, we can. And it makes sure that he leaves the poop so that no one will use it anymore. You need to um, taste it to see how near they are. No, you don't. We can see it's fresh. The leaves are wet. Why are you jumping straight into stick your finger in it? Not just your finger. Stick your finger in your mouth later. We're getting <laughs> close to gorillas. We're not, though. You've been saying that. We've been going for hours. We've got to walk the same route back. Five minutes. Five minutes. How long now, Dave? Seven minutes. He said seven minutes. Less than 10 minutes, the gorillas. <laughs> we are getting much closer to them. I feel this, this, is, is, this is very Tarzan. <laughs> Where they just couldn't find them. No matter what they did, they just couldn't find them. They just got stuck so many times. Same thing? Imagine it. No. No, I didn't. I didn't. I've never... Uh-oh. Oh, fucking hell. No, you twat. <sighs> Don't talk to me. Honestly, look at this. If I, I, I fucking triffid's got hold of me. For <laughs> sake. Dear me, I did. My feet are hurting. My toes are being crushed with these boots. My socks are wet. Got a headache coming on. Ah, uh, they have started moving towards where we passed. 
No, are you saying the gorillas are going back to where we started? Yes. <laughs> Slide down. Where we started? Yes. <laughs> Slide Diane Fossey. Stayed with them, didn't it? That she couldn't be asked. She did the trek. And so bollocks are going back. It's easy to live with them. This is an indication that we are much close to the gorillas. This is a gorilla poo. I've seen it. <coughs> this one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful? Yeah. Look, mate. I may say 10 out of 10. <laughs> It's a big one, isn't it? Shall we start with our smaller one? It's bloody massive. But how many gorillas are there in the world? We have got 720 mountain gorillas living in the whole world. That's it? 700. That's nothing. Like you could put the world's gorillas on one flight. They take up more than one seat, though. What a Carl statement. On one flight. They take up more than one seat, though. All right. Two you can points. get a lot of, if they had standing. If it wasn't taking off and, and there was no sort of rules, you could put some in business class and all the rest of it, you could get them all on it, which made me realise that that is a bit of a problem. Not that that is a problem. <laughs> Look at her nose. David should have sit down. You make me nervous. Hello. All right. What have you been doing? Well, it was the gorillas thing today, wasn't it? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Did you see one? Yeah, saw sort a of, sort of family of them. Bit of communication. There you go. That must be amazing. Well, no, not really. I've got a right headache. I've got mozzie bites on my head. Ten hours it was in total to get there and back. Really? Walking. Wow. In mud, socks wet, covered in shit. I got right. there, she wanted me to sort of give some quote as to what I was feeling like. I couldn't think of anything. We've got little A's. Long arms, short legs. <gasps> write a poem, Carl! You need to write a poem about the gorillas. And this is how it starts. Come on, man. Long arms, short legs. Is this your speech? Wow. You, you, you are just like Attenborough. That is just like Attenborough. Yeah, but he's, he's, I think it's all to do with the accent. If Attenborough said that, if he went... <laughs> And they've got little ears. People go, oh, that's good. I think it's because I, I'm northern, and people go, he sounds like a right dickhead. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? It's that here, nettles up my ass. I'm trying to think of something worthy to say. I just think, at the end of the day, I tell you what, don't say anything. Sometimes you can say it best when you don't say anything at all. Ronan Keating said that. If my sad eyes. Let's, let's, <laughs> let, yeah, there you go. Let's take the words of Ronan Keating here. I say it best when I say nothing at all. There you go. Oh, I'll put my hands down because there's shit everywhere. I mean, you know, I know that the trip was all about the gorillas, but I reckon I've made a lot of difference in Africa. You sorted that thing out for me to build a hut. I've done that for them. Yeah. I taught kids. Yeah. I cooked for the king and his mates. I shifted that rhino. That's another charity act. You finally did the bungee jump, which is pretty amazing, considering no, how adamant you were at the beginning, you would never do it. But that's and what that's what me... mm, that's what I was going to mm. say though, because I've been doing a lot of charity work. I just want to finish this trip by uh, sort of completing it, and I'll pay the two and a half grand when I get back, and then that way it's all part no, of. No, no, no. No, I don't mind. That's no, what I'm going to do. I, no, I want to, honestly. I want to. No, no, that, no, you did it. No, I pay it. You did the jump. You did the jump. I didn't do it. I didn't do the <laughs> jump. I didn't do the jump. 
Ricky has to have known. What's, what's he has to know. I didn't do it. I didn't do the jump. <clears throat> what, the bungee jump? Mm. Mm. But what, when... How were you going to get away with it? Because I just seen the footage of you not jumping. No, but I got the di I got Luke, the director, to put me out on and do the jump, but his hat came off, so you can see that he's not bald, so he didn't work. <laughs> this is like one of those dumbest criminals ever. I can't even be angry with you because you are so useless. Well, we can split the two and a half grand, then. No, 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 you're paying it. You didn't do the jump. That's hilarious. So now, not only are you made a complete plonk of yourself and shown that you're a coward and a liar, you're two and a half grand down. <laughs> but, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. it's my best day ever. You, you sure you saw the drillers? I'm not going to get it back, and it's Luke in a fucking fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> when he smiles that was great okay i like that he fessed up i i don't know why i was convinced that somebody told ricky since he was pushing so hard on it i like either the camera guy or somebody somebody from the crew was like you know yo he didn't do it <laughs> i that's interesting but that's hilarious that he got the guy to do it poor luke dumbest criminals ever that was fantastic that was a different kind of episode, though. That it had, like, a different vibe to it. It was, like, more chill. Like, even he's like, I don't know why we're filming this. But it was cute to see him happy. This is probably the happiest I've ever seen him um, since the cave. That was great. I mean, even the little laugh at the end. What a rare moment. And it was just really cute. And it's, it was just... Because <laughs> he fessed up and felt like an idiot. So that's great. But um, that was awesome. Kind of want a gorilla poem from him now for some reason. Just something. Gorilla and insect poem because it has to have some insect. But um, there you go. That was awesome. I love this guy. And, and his adventures just are fun. Just awesome. I kind of felt like he was maybe alone a lot in this episode. Like, he, he drove a lot alone and stuff. He was talking to the camera crew and stuff. But, like, I don't know. It was weird to see him on his own so much. But that was just awesome. Loved it. Definitely loved it. And can't wait to watch more. So there you go, guys. And I hope you enjoyed. I really do. And I hope whatever you guys are doing next, you really enjoy. And I hope, you know, you guys are all happy and healthy and all those things. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'll be around watching stuff and things. Thank you for everything. And, um, yeah, toodles. <laughs>